Hey guys, Thomas from Team Sakurasa here, coming at you guys with another Yu-Gi-Oh! Mark Watch for you guys today. And before we start off this video, I just want to say I will be doing a video later covering the Remote Duel YCS because it is such a clown fest. And I have screenshots, it's going to be a whole video, I'm going to go over the top 32 and how disaster it was, including maybe a few of the judge calls that were, in my opinion, pretty hilarious. Uh, so expect a video about that either later today or tomorrow. Uh, also, I just want to say thank you guys so much for 1,500 subscribers. I know we've already hit that a while ago, but I woke up today and I just thought to myself, you know, 1,500 people, a little bit over 1,500 people thought my content was good enough to sub for. And I just want to say thank you guys so much for that. And some people actually considered being YouTube channel members as well. And, you know, that actually makes me really happy because not only are you going to sub to me and watch my content, comment, and support, but you're actually willing to give me money, like... Just thank you guys so much. I actually want to give a huge thank you to some of my YouTube channel members. So thank you to Seto Kaiba's bank account, The Lone Descendant, The Harv Cardman. Also, I liked your last Mark Watch, man. Keep up at it. Carlin Lenker Frisk, The Shoe Laced Bandit, uh, Drew Chamberlain, Conrad H., and then our new channel member, Chaz Banks. You know, thank you so much for your guys' contribution contributions Chaz Banks I haven't talked to you in a while so hopefully you're doing good my man we gotta pop up in an MSK video or something uh and before we get into it if you guys can smash that like button and subscribe that would be awesome I'd love to hit 2,000 subs by the end of the year uh and if you're buying any cards off TCG player please use my affiliate link down in the description below helps out the channel to no additional cost to you Thank you to those who actually take the time out of their day when they buy cards on TCG Player or anything on TCG Player to use my affiliate code. You know, I really do appreciate that. And if you guys ever want me to go over any cards or alert me of any bouts, let me know because I love it when you guys give me cards to go over. Like, I really, really do because it starts a conversation. And if you guys don't know, that is the be biggest reason I actually made a YouTube channel was to build a community and conversation. Uh, second being an excuse, well, second being probably I just like making the videos, and third, an excuse to open product. But we're going to get right into it. Necro World Banshee from Structure Deck Zombie Horde. Uh, these are, after the, this one's gone for 13 they go up to $16. Now, I don't, I'm not going to say I don't understand why. Uh, this card literally lets you play Zombie World directly from the Hander deck. So it's really, really good because it kind of sets up as like a terraforming because zombies are very field spell oriented. And this is essentially their searcher along with it actually protects zombie world uh, by card effects, which is really good. And neither play can target it with card effects. So that's actually really, really cool. Uh, $16 though, I mean, it's a lot of money, but like I said, I understand it. So if you have these and you're not using them, I'd sell them. It's going to get reprinted eventually. I think this card should have been a maximum gold gold rare, but... It is what it is. In fact, Zombie World over here actually has a lot of value. I mean, Structured Decks are $50. No, thank you. Uh, Doom King Baladrock are about 10 to 11 bucks. Uh, Glow Bloom is about 5 $6 respectively, but I'll be honest, I've played Zombies. You really don't need this card as much. Uh, the Solitaires are about $4. This is a four, $5 common, which is really ridiculous because it's really only used in Zombies. And there's this is the lowest rarity reprint. This, to me, makes zero sense. Like, two, $3 Mizukis, I think this is just because it's from the Zombie deck. Because you could get common Mizukis for $0.50. Cents. Red Eye Zombie Necros are 3 Gozukis are like 2 Zombie Worlds are about dollar. Like, you get Ultra Rares for the same price. Anti-spells are dark. If you have this and you're not using it, there's a lot of value here. You know, like a lot of the comments are too, like Mask of Restrict. You know, Shared Ride is always kind of cute. Uh, if you have your singles and you're not using it, I would just sell it because this is just value not exactly worth keeping unless you're using it. Pot of Duality from Astro Pack 5 is kind of slowly getting bought out. Uh, Near Mints uh, for English are $200. They were like 170 beforehand. Uh, yeah, you got a couple cop a place it here for about two hundred. A uh, new seller here, but uh, once he's gone, you know these are quickly going up to two fifty, and they only have one page left. So if you want your ulti pod allies, I will get them now. I mean, remember this is even though it's not as competitive now, this is still you know an ultimate rare pot card that has been used in many formats and decks like ultra guys still use pod of duality, and I personally would like pod of duality over pod of prosperity. Uh, at least in my opinion, because not only do I get to run Pod of Extrav as well, uh, more, but 
Pod Duality lets me get a really cool going first play. Since I'm not really going to be special summoning unless I'm linking off from Melisleep. We're actually going to go over Ultra Guest a little later here. Maxi Ultimate Rare here are $400 and then it goes up to $620. Uh, yeah, for lightly played. So if you want a cheap copy, four hundred two dollars, that's actually really, really good. Uh, I don't expect this to be here that long, actually. Uh, if I was made out of money and I didn't have rent literally today, I'd probably buy that instead. Uh, Kamino Wizard from Astro Pack Three. Uh, these are about twenty five dollars to buy. A lot of these comments from Astro Pack. Uh, believe it or not, are actually sitting in bulk. If you guys uh, don't know what I mean by that, a lot of stores actually have bulk. You just have to ask for it. Maybe it's not in view. And the cards are usually either $0.10 cents a common or $0.25. Cents, and they never really go through their bulk like how they would go through like maybe cards they have prices for, all that. So you might actually find Astro Pack bulk. Now, you might not find a Kamino Wizard, right? But you might find something else from Astro Pack that's worth a few dollars, from OTS Pack that's worth a few dollars. Right, or some other commons are worth like some money, like some you know, Sukiomi's, all that. Right, so make sure you're always going through bulk and all that because you can find some hidden gems that are worth money. Like Gruesome Goo, uh, these are eight dollars. And fun fact, I actually have this because this is actually one of those commons from Astro Pack I just really liked. Gruesome Goo, just it sounded really cool. I actually have one. Uh, yeah, these are eight dollars. Uh, would I pay eight dollars for it? I don't know, but. P there are people over here that would, so I would grab your cop. I would not grab your copies, but I would sell your copies if you have them. Uh, then we have King's Court. I want to go over this again because I wanted to see how it is a couple days in, uh, about two or three. So we have the Secret Rare God cards. We have 500 because Raw is the most popular, which I don't really get because I prefer Slifer and Obelisk more than Raw personally. But that's just me. I mean, Slifer is up there with 495. Obelisk being about 400 here. I mean, we do have a lot of new sellers here, though, but Reinforcement Army Collectors are 156. These were bought out to 300, and then they sell back down. So if you got yours before then, and you were really excited, sadly, you're going to have to wait for your card to go back up. Oh, okay. Misclick there. Uh, we have Lightning Storm here as well, Collectors. Now, I actually did not see this. Actually, we skipped a bit, but Ultra... Slide for about 120. I feel like ultra rares for the god cards are actually quite cheap. It is all about those secret rares, but I do think that ultras are going to be worth some money. And getting them for about 100 is not too bad because they're probably guaranteed to double. Uh, Lightning Storm Collector. Now I didn't know this was a collector. I actually completely forgot. So thank you to those to that one person who reminded me in my comment section before. I appreciate when people point out when I make mistakes. Collectors rares for 138 is really not bad. I mean, yes, there is the Prismatic, but you can realistically get a playset of this and play it rather than the Starlight Rare. So that's something worth considering. I think this is actually not too bad. Uh, Ultra Freros are about $128. F-Zero Collector's Rares are $110. That is very cheap for being a Utopia card, but it gets even better from that. Ultra Raws are $108. Rescue Rabbits are about $75, going up to $78 bucks here. Not too bad for Rescue Rabbit, but Collectors Rare Utopia. Now, I had this my five cards to have from uh, King's Court. This is the best investment you can make out of King's Court, probably, uh, for Collectors Rares. I know a lot of people are going to look at me oddly, but I just think 70 for Collectors Rares are some of the cheapest. It's the cheapest CR, CR right now in King's Court that is bound to go to the moon, right? Yes, Reinforcement Army is really good. Yes, Rescue Rabbit is really good, but Utopia for $70? This is what I would definitely grab. Uh, hopefully you guys didn't hear my alarm there. Uh, Queen's Knight, though, Collector's Rares. Uh, 55. 42. And then... Uh, I just want to see the other one here. Joker's Knight. About $50. So, if you actually want the Collector Rare Knights... Uh, there's some money, but they're not too bad. I actually expect them... At least some of them to kind of go down, you know, 30 to 40 uh, for them respectively, because yes, you do w want these to play the deck and all that, but I don't think a lot of people are going to mess with the collector's rares too much here, except for, well, collectors, right? Uh, Guildfried, the Magical, uh, Steel Knight at $41, that's actually quite good as well. Uh, Joker Straight at about thirty-seven thirty-eight. Rivalry of Warlords at 40 going up to $50. Now, a lot of people might say this card is outdated, but personally, I still think it's a very good floodgate. If you guys actually don't know what it does... 
Uh, each player can only control one type of monster. Send all other face-up monsters they control to the graveyard. So you activate this. They essentially choose which type they want to keep. It's a really, really good card. And then it's a floodgate as well. So it's kind of, in a way, removal and a floodgate in one. And that's something I actually really, really like. Personally, I would get collector's rares. But I feel like people are going to underestimate them even more. They dip below 40. I would dip your toes into a playset. King's Knight, $45 here. Like, a lot of the cheaper collector's rares are really not that bad. Lightning Storm Ultra Rares are about $43. Something I love about this box is that if you don't pull a collector's rare, right, and most likely you're going to pull a $40 to $60 collector rare, that's most likely what you're going to pull. Lightning Storm is essentially counted as, what, as you know, almost as much money as a collector rare. So, if you pull one of these and you don't really like it, you can kind of upgrade to a collector's rare. And that's something I really like. Like, Imperial Bower... You know, thirty-five dollars is very cheap. Hyper Galaxy thirty-two. I hate. I really hate this deck, but you know, thirty dollars for this, it's not a bad investment. It could go up. Uh, number FO Utopia Draco uh, Future is about twenty-eight fifty, about thirty dollars almost respectively. This card is actually really, really good uh, because it's actually used in the Utopia stretch. But what I really like is it's affordable. $30, if you really want to play this deck, you could buy this card. And it's a really awesome ultra. It's probably not going to go down for a very long time. You know, you actually get your money's worth for $30. And that's something I like about this set. You get your money's worth. The Joker's Knight, uh, you know, uh, this card is about... Okay, yeah, so you have first set your mints here for about $11. 20 20 20 21 dollars all right so not too bad actually for joker's night if you actually want these ultras if you want to trust that new seller hey that's half price uh arcana triumph joker is three dollars now i actually did not list mine and in a way i regret it because these were about 12 13s at the time uh but i just think this card you know it's not a bad penny stonking she just looks amazing, I'll be honest here. Like, I, again, I would buy her off artwork alone. But again, good penny stunk. But what shocks me the most, and this is ridiculous, is Guilty Gear Free, the Magical Steel Knight. Listen, I, these were like $11, $12, right? I expected to maybe go a little lower or a little higher, right? Depending. But to crash at a dollar or $2, listen, this is Guardian Slime all over again. I would grab your copies of this while you can. I would probably grab 10 or 12. Like, this is ridiculous. For a for day two, an ultra like that, you also have Dolkas at $2. Those aren't too bad either. And if you're buying your dollar worth of gear feed, you know, these are actually not too bad either to grab. Uh, you know, World Legacy Guard Dragon at about 80 cents, 77 listings. Dragon Link is still topping. It's still got a top at the YCS. So these are worth picking up. I mean, you do have a couple walls here, but... You know, because it's so cheap and you're going to be hit, sitting on this for a while, getting 20, 30 copies really is not too bad, actually. Uh, but yeah, uh, King's Court, everybody. Honestly, it's good to hold this sealed, and I think it's still worth cracking open a little bit. Kaiba Man, Secret Rare from Retro Pack 1 here are about 383 then $500 now. Less than medium is 441 but it's still gathering data of when it's sold. So, this is a relic, however, so... You can never find them and you could get them for like a lot cheaper i would definitely go grab them uh dark revelation volume four here uh i actually really do want one of these they do one did sell here for 90 dollars uh lately played here for about 93 near miss for about 100 dollars going up to 150 not bad for secrets but if you guys want a high rarity kaiba man and you don't want to spend an arm and a leg look no further than the kaiba man world championship 2005 super Rares. now i actually got this card bought out back before a thousand subs i believe actually and I told people this should be worth a lot more money. And this got bought out to like $10, 15 I actually want to see what they're going for today. Uh, Mob plays for about $3, $4 all across the board. Lightly played actually here for about 4 bucks. It's so about, you know, 4 to $5. But near mints are going to run you about seven fifty. dollars uh, I think this card is still really, really worth it. Uh, as you see here, it does sell. Uh, I just think that a lot more people don't know about this card and how good an investment is. If you guys want a cheap game promo that is going to go to the moon eventually, I would grab Kaiba Man's because it's just overall just a good investment. Uh, TG Triant Launcher is bought out. Uh, well, was. People are listening up for what it's realistically. Dollar twenty-five. You know, two bucks here, two fifty. But first, in your mint here about five fifty, going up to about six dollars, going about to 
eight nine dollars this card is very inconsistent right now because we see dollar 25 here then nine what i would probably do with this card is if you want to pick these cheaper copies up like this copy up or like this playset go for it this is a solo printing and tgs are going to get support in the future because they're just a a beloved 5ds archetype but the card isn't the best card uh you know around 14 tg i heard some some builds don't play this which I don't really understand because when it's Link Summon, yeah, it's a little hard to get. But you special summon one card TG from your hand, deck, and graveyard in defense. The zone says points to. Uh, but it does lock you into TGs. Uh, but uh, your opponent tar uh, cannot target TG Synchro Monsters. This card points to a card effect. So it does protect as well. So you're supposed to sync up. Uh, this is 2200, so it's not bad stats. You sync up to some crazy TG monster, and then it's protected from card effects. Uh, well, at least you cannot target it. If it points us, it's not a bad card, but again, TGs are a casual deck. But if you want to be safe and pick this up since it's a soul print from the literal best 2019 set, go for it. Kwaki Mira Golaganta. Uh, coming from Ancient Prophecy. Now, I actually forgot about this Ultimate Error. Uh, it's actually one of my favorite Ultimate Errors from Ancient Prophecy. I just love the artwork. It's just, it's super cool to me. It's completely unplayable, but... Uh, oh, I actually checked these out myself because I actually wanted some. But Lightly Plates are $2 here. Uh, near mints are about literally 216, very cheap. First editions, however, uh, are also not really that much because once you go to the third page here, first and lightly plates are 445, 420. Uh, really not that bad for first eds. Uh, I mean, they quickly go up to about maybe eight, nine dollars. Yeah, 13 actually. Okay, never mind, 15 dollars. So if you want a cheap, cool ultimate rare that you want to add to your card, I get this. But remember, I'm not telling you guys to get this because it's going to go up. Now, eventually it will because it's a first set ulti from 5Ds. Everything will go up no matter how awful it is. Uh, however, for about a couple bucks, if you just want a cool ultimate, I, I would grab this. Uh, it will probably eventually go up in the future as well, but it's not going to be a card you move really well. Reinforcement of the Army, Hobby League 6. Someone finally bought out a Hobby League card. Uh, oh boy, 115, uh, 150. Now, this card should have been like something like 70, 80 a while ago. Now, I will address this, by the way, and I will address this when I make my five cards I have in your, uh, from Hobby League as well. You cannot play this in tournaments. Uh, you could technically get DQ'd from it, especially stuff like Reach or YTS. And trust me, people are scummy enough to do that. There's people who bitch about anime, like, uh, card sleeves or anime, uh, what's it called, mats and all that. And those people are just the biggest loser on the block. Like, I'm going to be honest with you. I know it's a rule, but if you're playing, especially at a local event like Locals, and someone activates Rota, and it's a hobby league, and you actually call just say, hey, they can't play that. You know, you could do this, you could do that. Like, uh, what you can't play this version. Point is, they are a virgin. I'm just going to be honest with you. If I'm playing Locals, and someone activates a hobby league card on me, I am not going to call anyone. That is the dumbest thing ever. If you do that, I'm going to be honest. You're just a bitch. Uh, I've heard stories about that, and just... Biggest loser slash card sharks just always do that. I understand why it's unplay. You can't play this because uh, I feel like the, the something about the feel and that you could stack it. This is something I've heard, but I've never confirmed uh, per se. But Konami also really hates Hobby League because of the whole upper deck thing. Uh, but they're relics and they're good investments. So if you got uh, reinforcement army Hobby Leagues for cheap. Good job, you made some money. Uh, limited removal is actually completely bought out as well. Uh, last one sold at about $14 here, so... Hey, if you could get Hobby League 6 uh, limited removals, I would grab them because you don't know what the new price is going to be. Kyoko the Ghost Destroyer. Now, I told people that's actually a really good card to get for older format. Now, you could get Mob Place here for about 9 10 bucks respectively, uh, which isn't too terrible. Lightly played here for about 11 12 because of that shipping. Near mints are about twelve fifty, going up to about fourteen. So, not too bad for Kyoko's. I would honestly grab this Hobby League version, but for Scapegoat, there's a Hobby League. But I would rather grab Ultimate Rares for like eighty six. I think that's a lot better. But if you want to grab the Hobby Leagues for cheaper, because they're most likely going to go up as well, that's not too bad as well. Uh, Melfi cards. So four dollars for Melfi of the Forest here. Melfi caddies are a dollar fifty, and Melfi puppies are about. Close to $1.50 as well. So the reason why I actually want to go over these two cards is because Konami has so much to reprint in the tins, especially from Rise of the Duelist. They're probably not going to touch Melfi's at all. If they do, they're definitely not going to touch the Supers. Maybe we'll see Forest, but we're not going to see Caddy, and we're not going to see Puppy. If you guys want to make like a cheaper type of investment into Melfi's, 
that is a 50-50. Like, you could be sitting on a useless investment here. Getting Melfi caddies and all that for $1.50 is not too bad. Uh, Super Melfi Mommy is about $0.80 cents here. Ultra Rare from Legend Duel Season 1 about $0.40. Cents. He's, like, flood the market. And, yeah, that's it for Melfi's. Just no value, but they're a fun deck. Fallen of Albaez, a.k.a. Dante. Like, I love Double May Cry, and this just reminds me of it so much. Twenty, well, about twenty-five dollars. Once you get out of these new sellers' hair, they're about twenty-fives. This is gonna get reprinted, but when it does, I'm probably gonna go buy myself some more secrets because I only have one copy. And this card is just one of the coolest cards out of Rise of the Duelist, in my opinion. Just beautiful, beautiful artwork. And honestly, they can make a set that has all terrible cards, but if they have cards that look like this, I'm just gonna buy them. Uh, if you have these copies and you're not a collector like me and you just don't want to have it for fun, I would definitely go move them before the tins. Uh, Necroface Gliders Assault Secret Rares. Uh, first Eds are about well, 390 So the reason why I want to go over this is because there's actually a cheaper English copy here. Uh, and that's not too bad. Uh, if these were English mod plays, that would have actually been a very good deal as well. Uh, first Ed Nimitz go to like, you know... Mob play 1200, 1900, all that. Getting this, uh, was it light play for about 400 for English? That's not really that bad. Um, I would actually probably grab that if you guys have time. And he is listing it for what it actually sells for $390. Uh, it is a bit of a gamble, but this is probably the cheapest you're going to get in Necroface because it can only go up from here. Exodia Necros from Master Collection Volume 2. Now, these are actually worth a quite a pretty penny here. Lightly plays about $19, but that's from a new seller, so we can't really count that. 22 for light play. Uh, near mints are going to be about, uh, let's see here, 100 bucks. But most likely, because of how old this card is, you're probably going to have a light play version. So I would just grab light plays instead. This is definitely a card worth grabbing. We're actually going to look at all the versions here. Uh, okay, that's not what I clicked. Uh, view all versions, thank you. Uh... Okay, so TCG player has been having this little glitch with this lately. So I guess we can't look at all versions, sadly. Uh, Necro Garnet Ultimate Rare from Tactical Evolution. Uh, we have a first Enderman selling here for 50. Uh, light Play Unlimited is about 19. First and Light Play is about 28, 29. And then first Enderman is about $55. Now, this card is played in a few formats, especially anything Light Swarm oriented, because you'd essentially be able to mill this and to gain a free attack. So. And there weren't really many cards that did something in the grave uh, by removing itself, like, on your opponent's turn. And still not that many. So, this is not a bad card for older formats. So, if you want an older format card from TAC Evolution, not bad. Elemental Hero Necroshade Shaman from DR4 is... Nobody's paying this at all. $14, $15 for a Elemental Hero Shaman common. Uh, like, I don't even know how this is selling. Personally... If you have this, this is just bulk to me. I would never even attempt this. Oh, and we can't. Uh, Elemental Hero Necroshade Shaman. Uh, Enemy of Justice is like 32 cents for comments here. Legendary Collection 2. This is the highest rarity, I guess, sadly. Uh, this card, I'm shocked, never got a holographic form. But I guess a lot of people just didn't like this card anyway. The Volatile Chain Dual Terminals are bought out at about $90 here. I mean, I'm not shocked. Can this card come back? I think it can. I mean, it is very good. I mean, it's basically a generic level 4 where you detach. Uh, or you can choose a monster from your deck and place it at the top of your deck. So you can stack your deck for next turn as well. But it does... Uh, What's it called? It, since it is a monster and not a card, you have to reveal it to your opponent, I believe, so they do know it's going to be in your hand. Deguso Emerald from DT7 here. Uh, this is actually the illegal one. 37 and then $36, respectively, for Dual Terminal Deguso Emerald. Uh, personally, if you're playing any decks like this, or you want to get these for older formats, because, especially Daguso Emerald, because it took a while for that card to get banned, I think when Zeus came in, so you can play a lot of Zexal formats with this card. DTs are not bad to grab. In fact, I actually want to look at Secrets as well, uh, because I want, oh my god. Yeah, uh, that's going to irritate me for the market watch, guys, by the way. Uh, Secret Rares here. Uh, first Ed Mod Italian for $4. I just want to look how that looks. It looks really awesome, but it just sucks that it's Mod Play. Uh, first Ed Light Plays are $7. That's actually really good for Light Plays. Uh, this is a version I'd also pick up as well. That's a lot cheaper. 
Uh, Junk Archer, Duelist Pack 9, you say 2. Uh, $10 for these, but first editions are about eleven thirty for light play. Uh, near mints are going to be about... Well, first of all, I think it's going up to 15 First enemy mints are $20. So, if you want this card for cheap, I would actually grab this copy while you can uh, That for that light play. This is an old Yusei Fudo card. That's actually not too bad. It's Junk Synchron and then another. I believe it's like a level 4. Yeah, it's another level 4. And once you turn, you can remove uh, one monster you put controls from play during the end phase. Uh, it returns to your opponent's side of the field in the same battle position. Uh, so, essentially, it just removes it. Uh... What's called during, uh, so you can like make your plays, get over it, attack over stuff, all that. So it's actually, it was used a little bit, but I, it's not a competitive card by any means necessary, even like back then. Uh, Junk Archer Super Rares, though, are almost bought out at $8 as well. Uh, this card just never got a proper reprint because Legend Collection 5Ds is just extinct this century, so I can't really call anything there a reprint when commons are. This is actually really good for Junk Archer because commons from this set. Range from five to like ten bucks. So, Junk Sinker on Dual Saga here are about three dollars, three fifty or cheap ultras, honestly. Uh, Junk Sinker. I actually want to look at other versions of this as well. Uh, because there are also more expensive versions. Yeah, we'll look at the secret here. Uh, we'll look at the tin, and then I want to look at dual terminal here as well. So DT is not. I hope you'll grab these at like three, four bucks. And now near mints are about. 525 plus that 80 cent shipping so they're basically going to run you about six dollars but they only got one page so this could go up to like 10 15 dollars uh legendary collection 5d secret rares now this is the highest rarity of the card 11 20 first in your mints are about 11 12 dollars as well and then you have about junk secret 2010 duels pack tins here uh lightly paints are about 260 going up to about four dollars it's not a bad version to grab as well they they actually look very very good i would just rather play secrets but these are a, a very big runner-up. So if you don't have Junk Synchrons, I would actually grab them. Twin Twisters, Ultimate Runner. I told people to grab these after the buyout at $50. If you did, congratulations, you made some money. $90 for Ultimate Earth Twin Twisters. This is still a good card, and it's back for removal. That is also a discard, so it kind of helps as well. This is a card that was always going to go up. When it's used to a format, it's going to be really, really great. However, when we get that new card out, Burst of Destiny, that lets you basically... Oh, your uh, card's can't, back row cannot be destroyed by card effects. This card's not going to be that good. It's going to be Galaxy Cyclone. So, make sure you have those. Uh, Solemn Judgment, Ultimate Rare here. Uh, you have Nirmit selling at 100 here. Actually, at like 7.9. So, people still don't want to play the $100 here, which is very odd here. Uh, 160 for Nirmit. That's still very cheap, in my opinion, because this card could easily go up to $300, $400. Where there's old formats I could play this card as well. And it is basically the Solemn Judgment that rules them all. So, for like, I, I really think this card is still undervalued. Uh, Book of Moon, Ultimate. Oh, by the way, if you listen to me and you got these for literally $70, I mean, they did go to $65, $60 for a very short time. That's when I picked up another, uh, another three copies, actually. Uh, but if you got them then for about $65 to $80, $85, you made a lot of money. Uh, and I still think you should get these. Book of Moons are actually going one page, bombs at 200, 115. If you have, if you guys are looking for a ulti at 100 something, Solemn Judgment got bought out already. You have a, you have a little bit of leeway with that card. This card though, it's going to go straight to the moon. I would grab your copies while you can. This is, this is literally a ticking time bomb and you know, it's all, it's literally, we don't have too much time left for that card. Divine Ur of the Herald. Uh, these are about 60 bucks, 62, 63 respectively. Uh, you know, I mean, it's a good card, but didn't make the splash that a lot of people hope for. But it is very good in Dryden. Uh, Amazement at a mass, at a mass pair are Likino. Here are about $21. And this card is really good. Like, the engine of Amazement's really good. Uh, Amazement time ticket secret rares are about $13, going up to about $15. Uh, Amazement attraction whorehouse. Ultras are about six dollars, but yeah, they quickly go up to about seven here. And then you have the attendant Kamikos at about two bucks here, so not bad for an ultra version of her. And then Cyclo Cult uh, Coaster at about three dollars. This engine is really, really good. I know Trap Tricks are playing it, and it just helps them actually be a very good competitive deck. Actually, currently makes me very sad that I did not see any in the top 32, but a lot of decks can play Amazement actually. In fact, I've actually been playtesting with them with Invoked, and they're not that bad, actually. 
this is an engine I would definitely pick up while you can because something later on can make this engine busted. I think this, and a lot of people know the value of this engine. And that's why these cards, even though they're not really in any top deck profiles, they're not calming down at all. Uh, Ticket might have, but everything else, you know, the ultra rares, all that, basically compensated for it. Multi figure sick rares are about dollar seventy. Trust me, when the new card from Burst of Destiny comes out that basically protects your back and lets you special, all you guys are gonna go to the moon. Uh you have ultra rares here at about $1.20. Uh you have Melaseeks here at about four dollars here, which is a lot of money because Melaseek was like a dollar card. So when I was looking at Ultra Guys, I really didn't understand this. This is a very good card, and I think a lot of random generic rank one decks can actually play this because it attacks directly, and then when it does, you send you target one card, your punk controls, send it to the graveyard. It does target, but it does send at least. So it's actually not that bad. Uh, and you can play like a little Ultra Guys engine. If you're playing like a rank one spam deck, you can play like three of these, and then you can play the one, the, like, you know, maybe one multi faker or something along those lines, especially if it's trap oriented. I'm not really too sure how it would go, but I understand why this card's $4. I'm just kind of shocked seeing how multi faker is very cheap. Uh, and this card's up to $4 or $5. Uh, what's called, uh, what was this card called? Marionetter. Uh, this, this gave me about $2 here. So, Ultra Guys are still worth some money. And I still think they're a very, very good deck. They're a very, very good rogue deck. So, if you're looking for something to play and you don't really know what you want to play, I would actually buy some Ultra Guys to try your hand at it because the engine can only go up from here. And it's always going to be a decent pick. Uh, Slifer and the Sky Dragon Seeker from the American God cards here. I wanted to go over these actually because... I actually was able to pick up a set of these for, I'm not even kidding, like $10, $20 a pop. Like, I got really lucky. They were, like, kind of beat up, though. But mob plays are 170 Light plays are 350 so... And people are buying them still in 2021, so... Is what it is. Uh, Wing Dragon of Ross Secret Rare right here. Uh, mob plays for 100 Okay, so this one's less popular. Uh, Lightly plays are about... $300, so you get cheaper mob play of this, which is quite funny, because Raw apparently is the most popular. Uh, I thought it was Slifer, but I guess it just differs, with the Obelisk always being dead last. Last, uh, And then, Obelisk the Tormentor, these are about... Uh, okay, that's the alternate Korean, so I don't count that. Mob plays for about $130. Uh, so it has the most expensive mob play, I believe, but Light plays for $160. You know, not too bad if you want these god cards for collectability. And I actually do really like these. They look really, really cool. Uh, they're not tournament legal, but man, do they look awesome. Cyber Jar, Duelist Pack Cop. I actually, you know, man, I really wish I kept mine from back in the day when I was a kid, but oh well. Cyber Jar, Duelist Pack Kaiba here. Uh, Ultimate Rares here are about 34 for Near Mint Unlimited. But if you want to go over to First Editions... Uh, sixty sixty nine dollars going up to about seventy. Near mints being about ninety four ninety five dollars, but from verified it's one hundred twenty four. But yeah, lightly plays for about seventy dollars. It's actually not too bad. This is a very good old collector card, and these do sell actually. Like lightly play on limits for twenty two. That's still awesome for an old ulti, even if it's not first dead. Like when it comes to these older cards. While first heads basically rock it up, that doesn't mean there's no value in Unlimited. So I would like to remind people that. Like, uh, just, what's it called? Oh, I have the first head filter on. Uh, but yeah, like I played for 20, it's really not bad for an old school ultimate like this. I kind of wish we also got Fiber Jar as well. Wouldn't it be cool to get an ultimate or Fiber Jar? Oh, I would love that. Insane and Beautiful Nightmare Kurumi. Uh, from, uh, what's it called? White Shorts, about $700 here, but... You could also get the, uh, oh, Vampire Ninja Sarah. I actually want to look at this. I love this card. Oh, man. Hundred bucks? Not bad. Man, they have If This Is a Zombie, actually. I actually really like that, actually. Uh, if This Is a Zombie was actually like one of those old classic, uh, what's called like etchy comedies. And I'll be honest with you here. Uh, etchy comedy, uh, it wasn't like amazing back in the day. Like, it's still probably even better now believe it or not like if we got some of the stuff we have nowadays back then they would instantly be classics but this was never a bad one per se it was definitely very goofy very funny right and the openings were very interesting right they really do scream like old 2000 kind of 10 ish openings and it, it's aged actually quite well if you guys know this anime that i'm talking about actually i actually really do like if this is a zombie 
unlike some other like comedy etchies that haven't really aged well. I, I'll still stick to my guns and say that Two Love Rue uh, aged pr like okay, only because of the manga. Like the manga aged well because it had a plot, a story, all that, right? It's something about seeing it written, right? Especially because I'm more of a Dojin guy. If you guys know, if you guys are men of culture, I should say, catch my drift here. I'm not all about watching. I'm all about reading it, right? I like to go for the manga, the source material, as you say so. So for Two Love Rue, reading it was really good. But the openings for Two Love Rue, in fact, do they have Two Love Rue here? Uh, oh, they do. Oh, that's that, that's great. We're not going to look too much through this, but uh, we got booster boxes for 330. Uh, trial decks for about 74 here. Uh, is that all the two lovers stuff they have? Uh, I gotta see this. There's no way. Uh, oh, okay. So, no, they do have more. Okay. Uh, I want to just see one girl, for example, here. Where's Lala? Uh, Lala Devil Luke. Oh, uh, well, they have, like, double rares for, like, a dollar. I actually kind of, I wish I could see this, because I actually might want it. I really do like collecting, uh, what's called white shorts. I'm not gonna lie. I really, really do. But, yeah, 2 Love Rue has, uh, Darkness probably has the best openings of any other etchy se season I've ever seen. Like, if you guys love anime openings, but you're not really into etchy or whatever, that's completely fine. Check out 2 Love Rue's first and second opening. Those are dope. I do love the first opening as well of just Two Love Rue in general. But hopefully, you guys, if you guys watch Two Love Rue or any of the old school Ashley comedies, let me know in the comment section below because I really always love these. Magician Souls, Legendary Collection, Magical Hero, uh, $105, $106 for these. So it's good. It will get reprinted eventually, but it's going to be a while. And Ultra Rares are still going to be a lot because it's a collector card and it's a meta relevant card because you never know when this card is going to pop up. Uh, I do hate it though, cause it's it just made a lot of decks that shouldn't be played played. Uh, that I just didn't like, like Spiral, the Dark Magicians from Magical Hero though. These are about, let's see here, sixty-seven here. First editions are what eighty seventy dollars. So I actually told people this is the card you should probably get out of uh, Legendary Duels because even if it gets reprinted, it's still the OG Ultra version. Uh, if you got them at 30s, that's great. I actually got mine for free because I didn't know these went up to about $50. They went up like maybe six months ago, and I was rolling for these. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. Elemental Hero Liquid Soldier here uh, is about, for English copies, well, I only played about 43 That's not too bad. Uh, 40s, $52. I mean, at least this isn't good, but at least it's no Malicious Bane type value. Or adjust the gold. Sunrise, though, uh, these are about three to five dollars here, and this never really popped any value. But now they're about eight bucks, going up to about ten dollars. So if you get sunrises for like five sixes, it's not too bad here. I mean, it does say Elemental Hero on it. Sky Striker Ace Rose here is about forty-eight dollars here for Ultra Rares. Sky Striker Ultimate Kagaris. Uh, you still have this heavy play by M. Cole Games. I love Robbie, by the way. He's actually really, really cool. He actually checks up on me, too. You know, uh, I actually want to take a second here to actually say this. I know a few people like to say some things, you know, like, oh, he's scummy. Oh, he says, honestly, I've met him. Dude is one of the most kind-hearted guys. Like, he's super nice. Uh, people like to say, hey, he doesn't like to help out smaller YouTubers. Dude, he shouted me out when I didn't even have 500 subs. And... Just overall, really, really kind guy. Like, Ro Robbie is one of the most wholesome Yugi tubers, and I'll always stand by that. Awesome dude. Uh, heavily plays for 124. Like, honestly, I might just, I would buy that just to support him personally. But it, I, I wonder how chewed up it looks. Uh, near mints are 195. Uh, here, uh, for Ultimate Kagari, so not bad. Uh, Sky Striker A Shizuku, uh, Ultimate Rare. Lightly plates are 110. Your mitts are 140 uh, for Ultima Shizuku's. Uh, luckily, I got mine at like 50 because when Kagari got bought out, I got my Shizuku's and I got my Hiatus. I was not, I was not hesitating. All right, I knew the time was now. I got these for like 50, 60. Glad they went up to the moon. Got my Hiatus for like 35s, uh, 70 bucks going up to about 76 dollars. Listen, I know this deck's not doing anything right now, but. We just need a little more time. We need a little more patience to find a good build. 
Uh, kindness here are back to thirty dollars. So I remember this was such a bulk ultimate from OTS. I actually ended up getting uh, I have two copies of this actually. Uh, one for myself personally, and one just to get rid of. Uh, I think this card could go back up. I remember this card got bought to sixty, but and then high at this for sixty. I was like. No way people are playing this. I've seen deck profiles where people are playing two, by the way. Please don't ever play two copies of this card, right? Only play one. And you only play one because it is really good, right? Because if the card is special, you target your face up, lost your controls, cannot attack until the end of your opponent's turn, uh, which is really, really good because essentially it helps in the battle phase. And Sky Striker is a deck that does, you know, work well for time. Um, each time you activate a Sky Striker spell card as well, or its effect, right? So that if you already have multi roll activated and you activate it, you're gonna get a hundred. Uh, you get a hundred LP immediately after the card resolves, uh, right? So this is really good because you'll be going over like Sky Striker, you know, spell cards. Like you're probably gonna be gaining a little bit of life. I wish it was like two hundred, so it's like relevant, because I mean a hundred's still something, but it's not a bad card, and at least it's something that you can link off to. It gives you an extra Sky Striker monster because I still believe three Kigari, three Shizuku, three Hayats is the way to go. You could play two Hayats if you want. Because the other 15 cards could be like Selene, Access, Boral Sword, and maybe something like Phoenix. You know, something along those lines uh, for your last two cards. But the extra space is a bit tight for Striker. Uh, Maneuver Afterburner Secret. Now, I told people this was a very good $6, $7 card for a first edition you're meant to invest in. Well, if you have Unlimited, it's just still basically tr over tripled your money. Uh, 25 here. First editions, though, uh, for Afterburners are about 20 2860 almost thirty dollars here uh i'm not shocked actually believe it or not in fact i heard of a place that actually has sealed dark saviors for like six seven bucks a pop and i actually still even though you know you're not gonna profit i still actually want to get a dark saviors box in fact let's look at dark saviors a little bit here okay we can uh thought that would work uh dark saviors box okay if we click you well it's 150 for boxes uh, here, so that's not too bad here. Uh, we'll just search up in Yu-Gi-Oh here. Sorry about that, guys. But yeah, 150. Really not that bad. Unlimited are 140. That's a little stupid, actually. Getting this uh, box for first edition here for 150 is not bad. So you have Afterburners being the chase card, which is just hilarious to me. You have, uh, what's called Widow Anchors. I just have it pulled up here, so I'll, I'll go back. $20 here. Uh, first edition near Mints, though, are about... 25 so i told people this is the widow anchor version you want to get these were like five six when i told you guys to get them and then 10 11s respectively so not bad for widow anchor actually here you have engagers here which i think i have over here uh 15 16 dollars first editions are about okay you know i'm just going to use the filter i i know that i have to like scroll a lot here so i'm not going to bother 26 for light play near mints are about 29 dollars I told people to grab these at $10, and I actually, this is the version I grabbed along with the other Secret Rare because they were just so cheap that I decided, hey, if I'm going to be holding these for a while, let me get the other Secret Rare, uh, and I made a lot of bank off it. Uh, in fact, I actually got the engages back when they were 10s, and then they dropped to 5s. I got very, very unlucky with that, actually. Shizuku Super Rares, uh, you have some cheap ones here, about 5 $6, but Super Rares go to about 8 $9 here, so that's kind of crazy, actually. Uh... Sky Striker and Mecha Cannon Secret Rares are about seven fifty eight dollars. Uh, Allure of Darkness is here actually. I want to look at these. Uh, five bucks for Unlimited. First editions are about yeah five bucks, respectively. Not bad to get alerts because every common alert is like three fifty to four fifty. So get Super Rares for fives. Uh, let's see what else they have here in this set that's worth some cash. Uh, B. I mean, people like this this deck. I don't. It's like basically it's five bucks for first sets. Okay. Mayhems are about four or five bucks. Multi rolls are about two fifty. Push metal goods are about three bucks. Uh, jamming waves are about two, 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 dollar thirty seven. That's some value. Penny stunk dollar, dollar fifty for super toon table of continents. In fact, I want to. Yeah, and the rest of this says uh, super rare mirror force are dollar. That's that's I love that. Uh, toon table of continents. I actually want to look at this. A little bit here. So you have champion packs here. Uh sixes. These are about my plays are about 120. Light plays are about 230. Near miss going up to 275. 
I actually like this card. I mean, it is the ultra rare, so I understand why it's a lot of money. But man, I have this is one of those cards I actually never saw in person either. I really would love to see a uh, copy of this. So I can maybe take a picture, set it up, put it up on my Instagram. Uh, gold rares from Gold Series Pyramid Four. This is the second, not the second highest rarity. I know people would prefer other versions, but four dollars for near mints going up to five six is not bad. Comments here for about three thirty. Speed duels two fifty. This is the version I would actually pick up. Dark beginning comments two dollars. You got legendary collection ultra rares here for about like dollars. Not too bad, but I would actually pick up the speed duel version. I think that's a very good version to grab. Uh, and then what else do we have here? Stardust Dragon Collector's Rare from Toon Chaos. About 160 here, 180. First editions are about $300, 305. Kind of wish I got these at 150 or 200, but instead I decided to spend it on Toon Chaos, and I don't regret that. I just kind of wish this came with it. But I got Chaos Emperors, I got all that jazz, so. I technically might have one of these, actually, because I have two first set boxes, actually, that I decided to keep uh, just to, you know, for later on. And if these boxes ever go to the moon, I'm going to be rolling in a nice, clean insurance payment. Toon Black Luster Soldier here, Toon Chaos here. Uh, first set light plays are 37 Near mint first sets are about $40. I mean, this card did get bought out and went up to about 80 so this card could go to the moon. Uh, personally, I would love to pick up some first heads from people. I was able to pick up unlimiteds, but that, I just didn't sit well with me. I'm gonna be honest. I don't like unlimiteds. Uh, I mean, even unlimiteds are worth somebody. I sold them at 36s here. So, microcoder super rares from Two Chaos are about dollar fifty, going up to two dollars. So this actually played in the Coder S Cyber deck. I told people to get the game promo at like eighty cents. Okay, co we we really want to be like this. I keep forgetting, guys. I I'm really really sorry here. Uh. Ultra rares here. If you got these at a dollar, what I told you, congratulations. You quintupled your money. Maybe even sex tupled. Six dollars here. Good stuff. Uh, Pod Desires from Toon Chaos. People said this would never be worth money. Two dollars. I don't know what they're talking about. Pod Desires will always be played. Uh, Toon Terror. Uh, I have literally, I'm not even kidding, about, a, about 70, 80 of these. Dollar ten, dollar forty. So, these ever go to like three, four bucks, three dollars, which eventually it will. Uh, I'm gonna be quite happy. Gammas, uh, six dollars go up to six forty five. There's a guy here with fifteen hundred. Man, I remember when these were eighty cents to a dollar, and people were calling this a bad investment. Well, I was able to get about roughly about sixty of these, so I'm glad because I have free money. Uh, I did sell about forty at this point, right? I sold many of them when they hit like. 350 and then more when they sold for five. I only have like a couple cop piece left, if even. Super rares from Extreme Force. Super rares about ten dollars. Just get the super rares. Don't even bother with the rares. Just get the super rares from Extreme Force. Uh, in fact, I want to see something just for lulls here. Okay, okay. You know what? Never mind. I'm not gonna see anything. High speed riders ultra rares are twenty five dollars here. Uh, not too bad here actually. Oh, if you guys haven't smashed that like button, that would be great. Um, so you, uh, I don't know if it's YouTube or what, but I'm not getting as many likes on my videos, so maybe YouTube's taking away all that, but hopefully, uh, you guys will smash that like button. Uh, Gammas here are about 163 front limited. First editions are about 271. Okay. Personally, I actually really want to grab these, but oh well. And then the last card, well, not last card day, is the 2019 Mega Packs. I actually have a lot of value. Seekers are $13 for Shizuku's. Bigfoot's are about $13. Ultra is about $11. Boral Sword's about $10. Suchinoko is about $10. Hers, $8. Uh, Ultra is about $4. Call by the Grave Secrets about almost $9. And this is at a one of. World Legacy Successions are about $7.50. So you have a lot of value here. Uh, Dragon Darks are about $5. Hayate's are about $6 for Hayate. Okay, these those are very cheap. Nessie's about six. Uh, Dragon Wars about four. If Colossus comes back, those are going to Moon. Unicorn's about five fifty. Ultra's fours, fours. Th this is about four bucks after this one goes, but this was like sixteen dollars. I had a playset that was just too cheap to list, and I was able to get rid of them for like thirty for the place. I was so happy. Ultra and Thunderbirds are cheap because it got reprinted in Ghosts. Uh, Rev System about four bucks. Kind of shocked at that actually. Suckers four. Cerberus is three. 
350 for Ultra Trap Tricks. Ibs could go to the moon, but 345s. Common Shark Cans. I always kept my stri my common strikers, actually. Because I get rid of bulk sometimes to people. But I always kept the strikers, and I'm so glad I did, because I had like five copies of this. Uh, Mothmans are about three. Reboots are about 350. These were like 50 cents. So if you got a bunch of these, hey, you actually have something worth something now. Kagari's 250. Uh, Dragon Hearts at three is making me happy. Incantations are at twos for the supers. Get the incantation supers. Trust me, these are a ticking time bomb. Colossus is about three dollars here. Like, yeah, first I like play three. Uh, Heritage about two fifty. Rev system about two. No one plays this, but still two. That when, when there's cards that nobody wants to collect or play, being worth money, it's a good set. Dragster about dollar fifty. Dollar quarter. Dollar fifty for Titans. Not too bad here. Uh, Galaxy Soul Flare is at dollar fifty. Okay. Uh, Arbreeze. I'm just going through the set very quickly. Beats at two. Like, look at all the dollar stuff here. Right? This is crazy. If you look at the value of Guru's dollar, common dollar, like, man, there's a lot of value in this set. Like, second slight, 75 cents. Common airspaces are a dollar. That's a little disgusting. We're at the sixth page. And, like, it's back-to-back. -back. Dollar. Do I don't even know what this card is. It does look cool, though. Dollar. Dollar. 50 cents. Yo, Griffin's 50 cents is actually a steal. Uh, I actually have a misprint one of these. A lot of 29 scene stuff has a little shift upwards. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And you smash that like button and subscribe. Uh, I want to actually talk to you guys a little bit at the end of this video, though. Um, about the channel and all that. Uh, so... Uh, I, did, I did like seven uploads last week, and I want to know in the comment section below, are, do you guys like seeing that many uploads? Because I just saw a lot of time-sensitive videos, or I on the fly was like, I need to do this video, I want to do this video. Along with King's Court kind of crept up on me, so I did a double upload on that. And I was just wondering if you guys like seeing those kinds of videos, because lately I haven't been getting as many likes. And I'm not that guy who's like, oh, you guys have to do this, blah, blah, blah. Or, like, you guys know, I don't complain about not getting likes or not getting, you know, YouTube ads or none of that. I would never be that guy because I love doing this for fun, right? Although, it is really, really awesome that I'm actually able to make, you know, an actual side hustle selling cards online because then I would have to get a job and I have less money for uh, YouTube and school. And now I can actually afford school a little bit better because uh, it's a little side money for gas, and it, I really do appreciate everyone supporting me by using my TCG affiliate link, all that. So I want to have a talk with you guys and ask, how do you guys think of the channel is doing so far in 2021? Because I want to make sure that you guys are still enjoying the content. Like, I always do what I want and what I always find fun, and I met a lot of people through the comments and over the years who love me because I do that, right, and love my content, all that. And I always really appreciate that. So when I don't see as many likes, I just wonder if I'm doing something wrong or if I'm alienating some of my, you know, viewers and all that. So let me know in the comment section below how you guys feel about the channel uh, and the direction and all that. Because I definitely do want to branch out and do more top fives and tens. And I want to do more market watches and all that. But life's been very, very busy. So by the time I do some market watches, some openings, right, my top fives, all that. The week's essentially over, but I do want to drop more top fives, and I am a little upset because I do want to get more collections on the channel. That is something I want to stabilize, for sure. And the collection video is coming late because not only did I have to upload so much, but I, um, what's it called, my editor actually was not able to get it in time for me. But you guys will be seeing that collection video soon. So I will see you guys probably later today with that top YCS, and I will see you guys next time. And remember, whatever cards you guys want me to go over or let me have any buyouts, let me know. Peace.